All right, I think we are live. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Welcome friends to another Together at Home webcast from Buffet Crampon. Uh, my name is Matt Vance. I'm the Woodwind Product Specialist for Buffet Crampon USA. Uh, it's good to be back with you in our continuing webcast series. We have a very special day today as we're joined by two special guests, um, two of the most prominent faces in the Buffet Crampon family. Uh, of course, here in Jacksonville, Florida, we're joined by the president and CEO of Buffet Crampon USA. That is Mr. Francois Clock. Francois, welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Matt. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. I'm, I'm glad you're doing well and, and healthy and safe. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, joining us from France, I'm very excited to welcome our second guest. Uh, he is the acoustic advisor for Buffet Crampon USA. He works at the factory in Montleville. Uh, please welcome Eric Beret. Welcome to you, Eric. It's really great to have you along with us this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Matt. Uh, hello, Francois. I'm very happy to be with you, my friend. Yeah, uh, me too. Okay. I, I, uh, Facebook. Yeah, it's it's very good to have both of you here. Um, of course, this is uh, this is a very interesting time for us in the music industry, uh, a changing time. Uh, I think what would be interesting for our viewers to start out with is to kind of get updates on the current situations with both Buffet Crampon USA and also with the situation at the factory in Montleville. So uh, maybe Francois, if you could uh, start out and just give us a a quick update on, on where we are uh, operations-wise here in the United States. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope everyone is safe. Of course, uh, it's been um, a long and uh, uh, strenuous road uh, for uh, everyone around the world, actually. Uh, here at Buffet USA, we are uh, still uh, working from home, um, but uh, we had uh, some uh, hopefully positive news uh, today from the press conference from Mayor Curry. Uh, we just announced that um, he may be lifting the stay-at-home order on the 15th of this month, May. So that means that we um, probably would be able to go back and uh, resume uh, somewhat uh, uh, kind of the new normal life. Um, so we'll, uh, uh, we'll see that in the next few days, but uh, that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. And I, I know I'm excited about uh, going back to to walk and see the team and uh, be able to uh, serve our customers. Yeah, it's very exciting news that we just uh, received uh, prior to the webcast. Um, Eric, I know in, in France that uh, things are a little bit ahead maybe of where we are here in the United States. You've actually been back to the factory uh, this week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today is a special day because it was the restart uh, on the factory for a few of them. Uh, I'm what, very happy to, to be this morning uh, and to see a uh, safe of, of uh, a part of my colleagues, sure. Yeah, that's yeah, very exciting. Things, Eric, things are in terms of production, um, they haven't really started back in the factory yet as far as manufacturing instruments, is that correct? Yeah, the, fa the, the factory is uh, still closed. I mean, we cannot produce clarinets uh, at this time, but we hope for beginning of June to be uh, ready to, to welcome uh, all of our colleagues. Fantastic, fantastic. So uh, really, uh, it seems like both, both entities were, were slowly working our way back to, uh, to production and to productivity. Um, of course, uh, here in the United States, we're being very careful as far as uh, social distancing as you are in France. Um, uh, thank you both for those updates. Uh, it's encouraging news. Uh, of course, we're all being very careful here in the U.S. as far as social distancing, wearing masks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, what I would ask our viewers to do is if you have any questions that you would like to submit to us this afternoon, um, that's why we're here. We're here to discuss um, the production of the clarinets in France. We're here to discuss the different models that are available from Buffet Crampon, the different Bohr families. Uh, our very first Together at Home webcast um, I did back in, uh, I believe is the, the, the end of March, and we discussed the different models of Buffet Crampon clarinets. And we had great response to that. And that was one of the reasons we thought it would be fun to do a session like this with Francois and with Eric to discuss um, 
to get a little more into detail as far as what we're talking about with the production of the different instruments and the different models. Um, what I think would also be fun is uh, to get a little more background on our two special guests uh, this afternoon. Uh, both are uh, very prominent figures in the Buffet Crampon family, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, both have your very unique progressions in the brand and in the company. Uh, Francois, of course, you being president and CEO of Buffet Crampon USA, uh, your, your evolution or your growth with the, the company uh, has, has been, I think, fascinating in terms of the different aspects of the company that you have been involved with. Could you maybe talk a little bit about um, uh, your involvement, not only with Buffet Crampon USA when you arrived in the United States, but your experience beforehand, not only in management, but in the production side of things as well. Yeah, uh, sure. I'm going to try to not, uh, not to bore people too much. Uh, started uh, fairly early on. I uh, was 15 years old uh, with Mignot Obos in Paris. Um, and then after the um, uh, very sad death of uh, Jean Mignot, uh, who was the owner, after a year, I was with the company, uh, he passed away, and then I moved on and looked at uh, different uh, organizations and ended up being hired by Roland Rigouta from Rigouta Oboes, uh, where I became an apprentice. Uh, first, uh, key making, uh, and, um, and after that, I uh, moved on uh, some finishing. Uh, and from that point on, I went to the military uh, for one year, and um, uh, came back to Riguta and decided with my brother to open a store in uh, Nice. Uh, so I uh, gave my resignation to Riguta and called my brother and he told me, well, I changed my mind, so uh, I'm going to do something else. So that was kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> I, was, um, I, I could not go back uh, to Riguta for whatever reason. I think maybe you didn't want to you know, show people you made a mistake leaving. Uh, so I went to uh, Gier. Uh, near Grenoble at uh, Benoit Berthet, when, uh, Berthet Music, uh, where I was uh, for a year as a technician and then uh, during the uh, L'Ecole du Mans, uh, which at the time was called ENAM, um, uh, I met uh, Bernard Campbell, who was the head of um, uh, the finishing department for Laurel Oboz, and he asked me if I wanted to go back uh, to production. And, uh, you know, I like skiing and doing the stuff in Grenoble, but uh, I missed Paris very much, so I moved back over there. And then I stayed at Loré uh, for five years. Um, and then I met uh, René Le Cieux, who was the research and development uh, person at Buffet. I think he was at Buffet when, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but he started at 14 years old. And then yes. he spent his entire career, uh, you know, from the production standpoint. So, you know, uh, when you put some timeline on the guy, he's, you know, he, uh, he met Robert Carré and Daniel Gauthier and, and all, the, all the people that have made a big impact in, in the, um, the company. And then um, he asked me if I was interested in coming to work for Buffet. And I, at first, I thought that was a joke because he's, he was kind of my hero. I wanted to become René Le Cieux. Um, I didn't. I don't think I will ever be, but uh, I would always try to get close to, uh, to that guy. He was uh, very interesting and very talented. Um, person and then I uh, moved to the US 1996 in December of 96 uh, in Chicago uh, to be product specialist and then from that point on I kind of um, moved with the company from uh, Chicago to LA, uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles to uh, Jacksonville and here we are. Yeah. So I, I, think, uh, I think it's really interesting how you moved through the production process and you you have a very intimate knowledge of the production of buffet crampon clarinets and oboes and bass clarinets and 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 i think i think that makes you unique in the industry and the fact that you have that knowledge that background um in the production of instruments that that maybe a lot of of management uh doesn't have they don't have that touchstone to where you know the craft and the care and the love that's put into making these instruments. Um, what I know you and I have had conversations before where you say sometimes you miss the, the production aspect, you, you miss being in the production line. Well, could you talk a little more about your progression from 
the manufacturing side into the management side. Of course, you when when I joined the company in 2006, you were director of marketing, and then you you've moved up from there. So it was was that a difficult progression for you, or was it did it seem kind of the natural way of things? Well, I, I don't know if it's, it was natural, but I was uh, uh, I was I think I was lucky to be at the right place at the right time um, with uh, a lot of people that have uh, you know uh, had. You know, give me their, their confidence. Um, I'm very uh, honored to have, you know, upper management thinking that I was uh, worthy enough to uh, run the company now here. Um, you know, I, I still do once in a while and I'm, I'm hiding. Uh, I still, uh, I'd still change some pads and, and do some adjustments and things um, because I, I do miss it. You know, there is, there is a, a big part of my career in the US when I came as a product specialist was, you know, being on the road and doing all the, uh, you know, checking the instruments when they were coming in, but in place, the platinum service, uh, you know, kind of changing a little bit the, the, the way the instruments were set up to try to, you know, get the dealers the best set, you know, ready to play instruments as close as possible to what would be, um, you know, um, agreeable for the majority of people. You know, everyone is very different and I'm sure Eric will attest to that as a as a you know, professional player you know we, we all have our own you know uh, desire to have something on the instrument uh, but sometimes you have to start with something that is kind of equal uh, and then you have very good technicians in this country and around the world uh, but there are very capable technicians in this country that are there to after that uh, kind of bring the instruments to little the little the tiny adjustments that makes it very personable for each players so the role that i had was really not i could not do the adjustments for every single person but that was to try to have a standard that would get it as close as possible so the technician would not try to kill me every time they saw me because they had too much to do um i'm sure there are still some out there that are trying to uh, uh, to get me, but um, yeah, so that was that was kind of a natural, you know, staying close with the artist and uh, being able to, um, you know, to share a, a lot of things with Eric. You know, I had the chance. Eric came to the U.S. a few years back, and uh, we were very. I was very lucky to spend a lot of time with him in New York, and that's always, you know, fun just not to see him, but also to see him work and his interaction with the artist and uh, his craft and his skill in listening and you know finding you know the best thing is what in what we do is to provide the musician with what at the end uh, what they want which is the most difficult thing uh, when you think about it because they they have the feeling they are the one playing you might feel something different than they do but at the end you need to please them they need you know they, they have their own idea of what they want and uh, the job of um, our job is to provide that to them. And I try to do that as much as, as I could in my career. Well, one of my favorite things, uh, I know we have a lot of people watching today that uh, regularly attend uh, the ICA Clarinet Fest. And um, usually during the, the, the time of, of Clarinet Fest, Francois will find his way behind, uh, behind the bench at our booth, maybe one day during it. And it's, it's really fun for me because even though Francois is is president and CEO of the company, he still has his his technician and craftsman chops ready to go at a moment's notice, and it's really cool to see you sit down and, and work on an instrument. It's it's like a fish in water. You just you immediately pick it back up, and you can tell that that's just an extension of of you naturally. And I always enjoy seeing that. And I think you enjoy it too, yeah, right? Yeah. As long as there is a window nearby, so I can escape if I do something wrong <laughs> and run. Well, that's the other, well, and that's the other thing too, is, is when Francois does get behind the bench at the booth there, that usually draws a crowd because people, a lot of our artists are very excited, excited to see him. And, and while, while I'm taking a look at this, I know we have a lot of artists tuning in today. I see David Gould saying, hello, David, it is good to see you as well. I believe I saw Ixie Chen that uh, is checking in. Hello to you, Ixie. And uh, let's see who else we have that, that's uh, chiming in here. Lots of good friends 
that are tuning Koda, in today. Koda is there and Diane. Paula Corley. Okay. Yep, Diane, thank you both for, for joining us today. It's great to see all of you and uh, great to see and hope that you all are, are healthy and well. So uh, it, it's good to see all our friends joining us this afternoon. Uh, Eric, uh, you, you come from a very unique perspective as the acoustic advisor for Bufik Um, I'd like you, if you don't mind, to, to talk a little bit more about exactly what that means, what your job title means, and, and how, as a professional world-class clarinetist, that factors into your position with research and development at, uh, at the factory, if you don't mind. Yes, totally. First, uh, I would like to say I'm very lucky to 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 join Buffet Crampon Company now for, from uh, since uh, 27 years ago, <laughs> and uh, I am lucky to to learn about uh, clarinet with uh, Mr. Daniel Gauthier and uh, of course René Lecieux. Uh, and I, uh, I learned too a lot uh, with, uh, with the clarinetist. I mean, of course, we had the, the, the official testers. Uh, I have the change to meet uh, as uh, old one, Mr. Lanslo, Guy de Plu. Unfortunately, they are dead now, but uh, all my life in Buffet, I have the change to, to be with the clarinetist all the time. I never cut the, the relationship between each others. I mean, every day we have a lot of people who they are coming to the factory and they are coming around the world. I mean, not only French Canadian people, but of course American, but we have Sweden, we have Spanish, we have Italian people, we have, and this is a really big change for me. That means I could understand and I could hear a lot of things and a lot of uh, ex different expression with clarinet. And that's helped me a lot to develop prototypes, of course, because I can't do anything alone. <laughs> I mean, I need, uh, of course, te technicals and the workers of the Buffet Crampon Company, but the first the energy comes from the clarinetist player. And really, I have a chance to 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 collaborate with uh, so uh, wonderful players and artists, and that for me exceptional uh, uh, chance. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that that is really. When I joined the company in 2006, uh, one of the first things that impressed me about the company and the brand is that intimate relationship with the artist and the fact that that we listen to the artist we get input from the artist um, i know you've been involved in the design of, of many of the the more recent models that have been introduced uh by buffet crampon the divine the tradition um could you maybe talk a little bit more about when you are sitting down with artists and you're discussing new ideas and new designs for models what what are some of the things or what are some of the goals that you have with the artist in developing these these new designs and new models yes in general the we could have some ideas about the new models uh, just because people want to to change a little bit the 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 sound uh, feeling and and the intonation maybe some intonation problems they they could have sometimes could uh, help uh, and to give me the the idea of what we could uh, start on on maybe one model and maybe to make some amelioration on 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 new models between uh, uh, combination between new mount species and 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 new clarinet. And it's a lot of discussion each others, and uh, a lot of feedback. Uh, feedback is very important. And um, for example, for the for the divine, uh, of course, the project at the beginning was to 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 change something uh, on the RC to to make an amelioration, but to keep the 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 the, the sound. And we decided to, to keep the most important thing of the earthy and to go to something new with the, with the divine. 
And, and for the tradition, it was a little bit different because uh, we would like to to research with the with the uh, old model we we stuck to make in buffet crampon the bc20 and we have the change to have one model still in the factory and we just tried it and and we 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 have feeling of the something very special in the song of course intonation was very very uh, very sharp because it was old planet and at this time, the, 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 the intonation uh, adjustment uh, was very sharp, but we, we keep the bore and to, to try to, to, to have the, the, the intonation uh, of the best instrument we could. Well, and that was, uh, for, for me, that was a fascinating experience um, with the development of the tradition clarinet. Um, the fact that American artists were involved in the design of the instrument, that it was, it was a, truly an international collaboration of North American artists and European artists to come up with this, this unique new design. Uh, Francois, I know you remember when, um, when we were in the development phases of the tradition clarinet, um, we, we were able to bring in uh, prominent North American artists all to Jacksonville to meet with the, uh, the teams from France. Maybe could you talk a little bit more about that experience for you? And, and uh, you know, for me, it was, it was a terribly special experience getting that collaboration of those really special artists and, and, and how it resulted in a, a wonderful new instrument. Yeah, uh, that, was, uh, that was pretty exciting because um, as you mentioned, that, that was kind of a first um, and, and having, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan Gunn, Greg Redden, Mark Nuccio, uh, Bert Hara, and uh, Victoria Luperi uh, uh, to kind of get, get together, you know, sitting in the room. And I remember Eric and, uh, and uh, Gregory de Mailly uh, came, uh, and then we all sat down in the, in the conference room, and we're all looking at each other, saying what's going to come out of this, because it's uh, always very difficult. And, uh, and really, that was uh, pretty amazing to see, um, you know, despite the differences and the different style, or I would say style of playing or personalities, that was very striking to me, the fact that uh, they really looked at the end for the same thing. Um, and that was, that was something that was uh, very humbling to watch personally, uh, and kind of um, pretty amazing because they, uh, you know, you're always uh, always nervous. You always kind of uh, hope that everything that you know, Eric came with prototypes, and we were hoping that uh, they would be close enough. And uh, so you have that nervousness, and then uh, everything disappears when they start playing and exchanging mouthpieces and doing all kind of uh, you know uh, very interesting tests. Uh, so that was that was uh, that was something that. Uh, uh, was was very good and of course that uh, helped uh, also uh, put a little bit of an American twist I would say uh, even though it's not um, uh, it's not something that you know uh, is, is, is entirely correct but it's you see what I mean it's it's something that uh, that was an international collaborative effort uh, and that really helped also after uh, to have uh, you know many other people like uh, you know Yehuda Gilad after uh, you know, called me and then we sent some instruments. He went to France and visited with Eric. And, you know, there is, there is a lot of those connections after that are kind of uh, coming together. And then uh, Martin Frost and, and every, everyone that is involved, uh, you know, kind of it's like that, that puzzle that comes together and at the end makes that, uh, that, great, uh, that great instrument. So that was, uh, it's, it's always very, I know for Eric because he's doing this a lot more uh, than I do now. Uh, but for me, that was something very special. Uh, you know, sometimes when you do something every day, uh, you kind of take it for granted. Uh, but it's pretty amazing to be able to be around so many incredible artists uh, and just, you know, pick their brain and, and, and have a collaboration with them. It's uh, really rewarding. Yeah, and I'm just uh, looking at our feed, seeing some more of our artists uh, joining us this afternoon. I see Charles West. Hello, Chuck. It's good to see you. 
Pascual Martinez Forteza is joining us as well. Pascual, welcome and thank you for tuning in. Uh, I also saw Jonathan Gunn come in there and it's great to see Jonathan. And uh, Ani Bavarian is just joining us as well. So welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. Of course, some of those artists, as Francois mentioned, were involved uh, directly in the design of the tradition clarinet a few years ago. Uh, 2019 saw a, a, a version two of the tradition clarinet. Um, uh, uh, some some modifications to the original design, Eric. I, I know that you were involved with some of the uh, the changes from the original tradition clarinet into version two. Could you talk a little bit more about uh, that evolution and and what were behind some of those changes? Yes, of course. Um, maybe maybe uh, Francois, could you help me to to do the translation because. Uh, I would maybe explain it in French. Uh, sorry okay. for my English, not perfect, but I would like to be precise, and I think it's it's better I could explain my 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 uh, my by, by in French if if it's possible. Okay. Alors, le, le, nous avons eu la, 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 la chance de travailler sur la, la tradition avec l'équipe de clarinettistes américains. Uh, que, que nous avons rencontré ensemble, François. Okay, so um, we've had the pleasure and privilege to work with the American uh, musician team uh, that we've met uh, when, uh, when Eric came to the United States. La traduction a, a été uh, tout de suite, uh, dès, dès, sa, dès sa, 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 sa fabrication en France, a été un a recueilli un intérêt tout particulier, notamment des, des clarinettistes européens, alors que c'était un modèle qui était aussi destiné en, pri en priorité au, au, au marché américain. So the, the interesting um, uh, part of the tradition is uh, as soon as it was put in production and available, um, Eric and Buffet Campon saw that uh, the interest uh, of the European players uh, was uh, uh, pretty high, and uh, that was kind of interesting when we know that in the, the, the thought behind that instrument was really more to do something more American style. Um, but at the end, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of European liked it. Donc, euh, les, les Européens ont, ont effectivement plus euh, l'habitude Euh, d'avoir sur leurs instruments une finition euh, prestige haut de gamme, c'est-à-dire un, un bois qui est naturel, non teinté, avec euh, le levier de mi bémol et la correction du fa grave. So the, the, the Europeans are, are more used to have um, uh, their instruments with the auxiliary flat, the handstand uh, wood, the prestige wood, which is denser, and the uh, F, low F correction. Voilà, donc, en fait, l'évolution de, de la tradition euh, qui, en 2019, elle est simplement, euh, c'est une différence simplement sur le, la finition, la qualité du bois, mais on retrouve toutes les caractéristiques premières de, de, la, de la première génération de tradition, toutes les, toutes les qualités d'intonation et, et, de, et de sonorité. So the, 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 those are the main changes because the, uh, the characteristic, the ball, uh, the acoustical uh, design, uh, the intonation, all the work, uh, I would say the skeleton of the, 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 the tradition uh, is in that new uh, or that version two, if we call it the version two. Um, so the, the, the biggest changes are uh, the prestige wood, and, and all the components that I've just explained, auxiliary flat and the low F correction key. But acoustically, it's, the, it's, it's exactly the same bass. Mm -hmm. Voilà. Uh, so the cylindrical bore that was inspired uh, from the BC-20. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, uh, just checking out the, the comments and, and people checking in. It's great to see Mark Nuccio uh, on there as well. Uh, we have some dealers that are viewing this afternoon. I saw Pam Muncy. Uh, hello to you, Pam. Uh, also, John Weir is checking in from Toronto. And John, it's great to see you. I know that John 
uh, at Taplin Weir has been a great supporter of the tradition clarinet in Canada, especially the uh, version two. I know it's been very popular and very successful up there. Um, Ani Bavarian, uh, one of our artists who is uh, watching this afternoon, uh, she submitted a question about the Lejean clarinet. And let me see, I want to make sure I get her her question. She uh, just recently got a, a new set of Lejean clarinets and likes them very much. Um, she, she is asking if you could talk a little bit more about that specific model and how that model uh, came to evolve out of the uh, original tradition clarinet, because it is in that same bore family with the cylindrical bore. So, so what, was the, what was the story behind the Lejean clarinets, Eric? Hello. The legend clarinet is coming just after uh, the tradition because, um, of course, we have the we we found something very interesting on the BC twenty bore, and we would like to explore uh, some something between uh, the, the 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 size and the diameter of a bore between the BC twenty and between the R thirteen, and um, it's especially for the, for the Europe market, we need to, to change, to have a little bit powerful sound uh, compared to the, to the tradition. Uh, for some people, you know, in Europe, the opening of a month species are, are a little bit more open. And, and for some clarinetists player tradition was so easy to blow, a very nice timber, but that less a little bit powerful. And we we try on the legend to open a little bit the 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 bore, uh, especially on the bottom, just a little bit, just to have a little bit powerful. That was the the, the the more important thing we did on the legend. And of course, we we have uh, some speci specific things. Uh, like on the upper jump, we have the green line tone holes uh, inserts on. Uh, this is very important to specify that's changed the, 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 the color of the sun too. And uh, we have the, the gold, uh, rose gold plate on the, on the post too. And, and we worked on the, uh, on the on the on the keywords too. It's it's a, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, Francois, I'm sure you remember when the uh, the legend was was introduced in the United States. It was at the uh, ICA Clarinet Fest in Orlando. I think that was was that 2017. Yeah, that when Nicola came here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think you remember the the reaction to the instrument when we we had it on the display. It was. Uh, it was pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah, that was the. Uh, that's what you. That's what you call like an instant success. Uh, <laughs> that was the. Uh, that was interesting because we only had a few sets. I think there was only two sets that uh, Eddie Van Oost uh, was kind enough to bring with him, um, and then there were there was like a mob around the <laughs> around the, the booth uh, trying to uh, um, to take a look at those instruments. So they are. Yeah, that was. I remember that uh, vividly. Yeah, it's a, it's a cosmetically, it's a beautiful instrument. In in, in addition to to sounding beautiful, and, and Eric, I appreciate your your discussion of the difference between the legend and the tradition. How it has, uh, in your opinion, a, a little more power, a little more powerful. Um, and some of the other things that you discussed with the instrument in terms of the differences from the tradition. Uh, specifically, you mentioned the green line tone hole inserts on the upper joint. Could you talk a little more about why that's important and, and why those were, were added to the legend clarinet? Yeah. Um, en fait, l'avantage du, du, de l'insert en green line, c'est uh, en cas de fente, la fente ne peut pas traverser l'emplacement. C'est une sécurité s'il y avait une fente sur le corps du haut. Et évidemment, comme cet emplacement est en green line, il garantit aussi une qualité uh, de bouchage qui est optimale. Okay, so the, the biggest advantage of putting the insert with the, the green line material is twofold. Uh, number one, 
uh, as you know, um, sometimes with changes in, in weather or um, you can have a problem with cracking. So if, if there were some cracks that usually go through the tone hole and then the, at, at that point when you have a, a, a crack into a tone hole, then the, uh, the, the pad is leaking and the instrument is leaking and is not playable. Uh, having that insert actually stops that crack from growing through uh, the tone hole where the pad is sitting. So it doesn't affect at all uh, the sitting of the instruments. And also because of the, uh, the specificity of the material, uh, the green line material, uh, that, that also uh, provide an optimal uh, sitting to the pad uh, because there is no porosity. There is a, it's, a, it's very, very dense. And uh, so it provides an extra security uh, for people in case, uh, you know, with the traveling and well, not, not much now, but usually uh, with, with people traveling, going to different countries to get to different climates, uh, that really adds um, an extra security. Yeah, which I, I think that's an extraordinary addition to that instrument. And the, the Legend is also available as a, as a green line instrument as well, correct? Sure, correct. Because uh, as you know, you we, we has the the diameter of the bow is not so large. Uh, I mean, on the the green line material, the response is is very very good, and uh, really, I it's important to know uh, has this different material. It's different clarinets. I mean, it's the same borrow, but the, the reaction when you blow and uh, is totally different. That means because the, the density of the green lines is so, it's so hard, it's so, and that means the, uh, the size of the bore is very small and the reaction is completely inverse compared to the wood. And really it's important to to know the legend it's it's another planet uh line compared to the wood hmm. well and and i in my discussions with uh, gregory demaye who's the uh, woodwind product manager for buffet Campon group uh, i was surprised to learn that there are some clarinet models that uh attempts were made to produce a green line version of a particular model and it simply did not work um, because of the, the changes in density. Is, is, that, is that something that you've experienced? If I, for, I have a memory about the, 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 the divine when, when we did the prototype in divine, but in green line, and we was very disappointed because it doesn't work. I hmm. mean, the, 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 the combination between the, the size of the ball and the material was no good. And, we decided not to present it uh, in green line because it was not on the same level. Uh, on the Tosca, for example, in 2003, when we presented the Tosca, uh, the idea of Paul Barona, the director uh, at this moment, was to present a very high level of, of clarinet, but with a green line, uh, material only, uh, and we developed the bore of the Tosca for the green line. And Mr. Barona don't expect to, to present on the market some Tosca wood Tosca, but and but uh, and with the time we we finally decided to make wood because the people were so used to play on the wood. And it was really beginning for, for Green Line. But the quality of the Tosca Green Line uh, is really exceptional. And uh, on the legend, uh, it's a little bit the same uh, because the, the, the sound of the, of the Green Line, for some people we search something a little bit warm, uh, they prefer the legend and the Tosca with the Green Line. And if you prefer something with a little bit timber and the sound, you will go to the to the wood. Do mm. you see what I mean? Yes, and and that's something I, I I remember when Francois and I were talking about the Tosca soon after I joined the company. I was I was very surprised 
to learn that the Tosca was designed as a green line instrument first. And, and when I share that information with, with some of our artists and some of our colleagues, they're always very surprised to learn that because I, I think, I don't know so much in Europe, but I think in the United States, people still look at green line and, and either don't understand it or they think, oh, it's, it's a composite material and which is kind of a, almost a dirty word in the United States. And it's, it's really a wonderful material that was utilized to its fullest when the Tosca was designed in 2003. Yeah, and you know, man, now we have generation of clarinetists. They always, always are playing on the green line. Don't, they, they don't have the same, uh, you know, uh, for, for them, that's normal to play on the green line. It's, it's more difficult to come back to the wood after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they've gotten so used to the green line. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, Eric, I think it would be interesting um, if you talked a little bit um, about preferences of, of boar. Um, I know uh, in, in learning from Francois that of course in the United States and North America, there is a, a strong allegiance, a strong preference to the R13 boar and, and the, the family of clarinets. Um, it's, a, it's a little different in Europe though. Uh, the, there's, there's not so much uh, R13 Boer family players, they, they, there seems to be a little more diversity in Europe. Is that correct? Yes, that's totally correct. That's strange. Maybe if we search about the story of Buffet, we could understand why. But uh, in 1955, uh, uh, Mr. Robert Carré presented the R13, and it was an incredible revolution. Uh, I think in French, we cannot find this kind of model because very quickly after uh, they, they developed the, the incredible RC models. Uh, and I don't know why, but RC is much popular in, in French, in, in Europe especially. Uh, and it's another family of boar. And I, I, I could I could see the most of the people uh, which trying the earth thing in French to love this clarinet. And if you compare the earth 13 and sometimes with the festival, because festival is the same family of boar, uh, the lot of people in Europe are playing on the festival. Festival is still very popular. Mm -hmm. Now, Francois, when, when you came to the United States in, in 1996, um, some of these models had not been introduced yet. Um, there was still obviously a, a great loyalty to the R13. What, what have you seen in North America as far as an evolution of sound concept and, and uh, artists and, and players diversifying uh, beyond the R13. Have you seen any kind of trends or, or anything that you find interesting with that regard? Well, the, the, uh, the most amazing thing was, I think that was the, the, uh, the first ICA that I attended uh, was in Lubbock, uh, Texas, um, which was quite a, I think I just arrived from Paris to Chicago, December 96, and then in July, I end up in Lubbock, Texas. Which, which is was, just uh, like Paris. Which is just like <laughs> Paris. That was very interesting. I remember uh, going down with Phyllis Williams, who was at the time, uh, she was the, the person in charge of artist relation. And uh, I sat down at the breakfast table and then I, I kept looking weird. And she says, are you okay? Are you sick? I said, no, I think there is a man with a gun uh, at, uh, at the breakfast thing. I said, oh yeah, that's all right. That's, you know, people do that here. So that was like my first, so I ate very quickly and I escaped the place very quickly. Because that was kind of a novelty for me. Uh, but that was, that was the first time really where we displayed something big, more than just R13. Uh, and I think the big, the big change has been, uh, you know, the availability uh, um, of, of instruments and the variety in the line uh, that Eric has described. Uh, you know, there, is, uh, there, are, there are many different models. Uh, everybody has their own uh, test and I think uh, bringing those instruments to the American, uh, the North American uh, public, um, kind of gave a little bit more of the, uh, uh, the, the 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 array of of choices that you have 
on on the on the buffet crampon uh, lineup. So you know, from I think of Anthony uh, Anthony McGill, uh, who I think I saw uh, was was on there. You know, Anthony has played the RC Prestige. Uh, he's been trying the tradition, um, and that's something that when I first came was was very difficult. You know, I would go to shows, and that was just R13. Uh, the festival was kind of going away from the tradition, um, which which is the symbol, as Eric explained. Uh, but there are very very few people that played uh, on on other model. So I think really the answer is the artist. Is the artist that have you know, uh, I've tra you know, traveled and uh, went to the factory. Uh, we made available, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the office and tryouts and, and really explaining the differences, sitting down with, uh, with the players. Uh, and then you have, you know, it's like a, um, a painter. I remember Mr. Lancelot uh, one time when, when I was at the factory saying, you know, that would be really boring to look at a painting with only one color. Uh, and, you know, I kind of kept that because he was a, you know, big five RV uh, mouthpiece uh, person and, you know, really, really, he was sticking to that idea that there was, you know, I need to be able to replace it. Uh, but he made so, such amazing colors uh, when he played. Uh, that was never the same, even when he was doing some arpeggios. Uh, that was really, really musical. And that's what you also, uh, we hear, I mean, you know, when people come at the office, uh, uh, Matt, you know, we hear a lot of this also. It's always a pleasure to have people coming in and, and really find those colors. So that was really giving a different, you know, uh, more colors to deal with uh, in, you know, to, uh, to paint music, if I can say. Uh, I always look at music very close to painting. Um, and, you know, the, the tones are the colors and there is not one color that would be extremely boring. So. Um, I like the trend today. I like the fact that it's difficult. It's more difficult for us uh, because you have to have more. And, and for the, uh, our dealers, I see there there are a lot of dealers on online. You know, um, it, it need to have more selection. But at the end, it also uh, provide Eric and, and his team with a lot more feedback on how to develop other models. Uh, I think it's really good to be challenged and and to have different. Uh, different models because it also makes the musician more demanding, uh, which is which is really good for us. It's the fuel, you know. You you always want to be challenged. I know I know Eric is uh, uh, like the, the challenge. You can see at his haircut, like me. Uh, we used to have, <laughs> and now it's it's uh, it's all those challenges that are. Um, so uh, you know the trend is is really this. Uh, there is not really R13. It's still very popular in North America. Uh, but there are there are a lot more differences in in models. But you know the sound is still the same. The concept, the the, the style of playing, it's really interesting. You still have that school of playing that is very particular to the North American market, uh, mm -hmm. as you have in all different parts of the world. Uh, for our viewers that are tuning in, and you may not be familiar with the different varieties of buffet crampon clarinets that we have. There are three distinct Bohr families that we're referring to. Uh, there's the R13 Bohr family, the RC Bohr family, and now the tradition Bohr family. Uh, the R13 and the RC Bohrs are both polycylindrical in design. And then the tradition Bohr family instruments are cylindrical in design. So you get a little different spin to the air, a little different sound quality and a little different response. Uh, but there are, are lots of models available in all, all three Bohr families uh, that we feel you will help you find the sound uh, that you are looking for and the response that you are looking for. Um, Eric, I have to ask you as, as uh, someone that is in the factory uh, almost every day, uh, uh, a high-end professional player, do you have a preference uh, that, that you like as far as a particular Bohr design or model? Uh uh, Francois, could you help me to translate to be sure of the question? Sorry, Matt. Huh? No, no problem. Can you repeat, Matt? Uh, just if Eric has a, a personal preference uh, of, a, of one of the board designs that he, he likes uh, or that he hears in his ear that he prefers. Um, uh, Matt demands pourquoi tu joues de la trompette. No, c'est grave. Uh, Est-ce que tu est as. Est-ce que tu as une préférence particulière pour une certaine perse 
euh, dans la gamme buffet crampon euh, Quelle est ta préférence de perce Alors, c'est c'est une question très difficile, Matt. It's a very, very difficult question, Matt, because of course I'm very lucky. I have the possibility to to uh, to change clarinet sometimes. Uh, I'm very lucky because I played on every clarinet, every model. I change every two years. I'm working on for 27 years for buffet. You could imagine <laughs> I, I change a lot of clarinets. And each time, every time for me, when I have a new clarinet with a new ball, with a new model, it's like new discovery. I mean, it's a new experience. Uh, of course, you know, I, I, I played, I practice a lot. I, I, I love really to practice. I have the lucky to, 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 to practice and to play at the factory. Sometimes when I come back at home, I practice one hour because I need to practice. Uh, and really, I, I played on the R13, I played on the RC, I played on the uh, Tosca, I played on the festival, I played on the... And it's very, your question is very difficult because for each clarinet, it's an incredible high level. And when you change, you have to make some adaptation all the time. You are, this is a, you have to ask you some new things. Maybe you have to change month piece. Maybe you have to find some different kind of weights. Uh, and, and this is, all the time a new experience and for the artist i think is it's like your personal evolution as the artist and when you change when you have new uh, sensation you will play differently because this is a combination with your instrument and i mean for me i'm playing on the tradition at this time, uh, at this moment, I'm playing on the tradition. <laughs> really, for me, it's every day a pleasure to, to practice on this clarinet. I feel very good. I, I like the intonation. For me, I, I feel especially very good with the intonation of the tradition. I, I'm, I don't know if the best clarinet for the intonation because voila, all of them are very high level of intonation, but I mean, I feel good on, on this mo model at this moment. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that was that was kind of a trick question. It's a difficult question. It's it's like selecting yeah. your, your favorite child or something like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, we're, we're coming up on the hour. And again, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for tuning in this afternoon. Uh, we I see some more dealers that have checked in. Uh, I see uh, Rodriguez Musical Services. So hello to Heather. Thank you for watching this afternoon. Uh, Lisa Canning is also joining us from Lisa's Clarinet Shop. Lisa, thank you for joining us and for promoting today's session. Uh, Mark Overton from Sax Quest and Clarinet Quest in St. Louis also says hello and hello back to you, Mark. It's great to hear from you. And we also have some artists checking in. We have uh, Sergio Bossi checking in. Sorry? I saw Pam. Pam Mansi yeah. is also a waiter. Yeah. Hello to Pam in God's country. It's good to see you. Um, let's see. I see Christian Schubert. I see Patrick Graham, Stacy McCauley checking in. It's great to see all of you. Andre Moisan is joining us uh, today from uh, Montreal. Andre, it's great to see you. I really enjoyed your, uh, your videos. <laughs> Um, before we wrap up today, Eric, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about uh, the group that you perform with. Um, if, if you haven't seen any of the videos of Eric's group, and I don't want to say the name because I'm going to butcher it, the pronunciation. I'm, I'm going to leave that yeah, yeah, to you, it's but nice. it's really a fantastic. Les Bonbec. Les Bonbec. Les Bonbec. Les Bonbec. There we go. Les, les Bonbec. Uh, yes. How's that? Very good. <laughs> you know, the, Merci. The, the group is, <laughs> yes, I am lucky to play with Le Bonbec. Uh, this is very uh, old experience now because we are playing together since 25 years. And uh, of course, Le Bonbec, it's it's a beginning of, of some f friends and we are playing together. But that special group, because as you know, we not are not only playing clarinet but we have to 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 move and to dance 
uh, when we are playing clarinet. And this is fantastic group because uh, for me that's opened my mind a lot, of course, because we have the possibility to play and to, to, to practice and to, to, to meet some incredible dancer, to, to make some experience. How could you play and dance in the same times? And this is finally possible. <laughs> of course, it's a special exercise exercise but but Le Bonbec is is uh, is for me the the possibility the possibility to always keeping uh, an artist uh, artistic activity and that I would like to explain to all the musicians we are uh, on the Facebook at this time they they, they, they know <laughs> I know the difficulty to be on stage <laughs> and to and to play with uh, our problem with clarinets we with uh, we 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 have with the clarinet i mean to find good reads sometimes we have the problem with the water in the tone holes uh, and really when after i have to think about something new and 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 I have to think, as we speak before, with uh, some ideas uh, that help me a lot to be on stage. And uh, I could understand the stress, of course, the musician could have when they have to play uh, in the orchestra because they are solists, uh, in the chamber music, uh, uh, and it's a big responsibility. And uh, I always uh, know that and uh, it's why uh, our clarinet uh, has to be the best <laughs> because well, it's a very good job <laughs> if if uh, the viewers if you've never seen any of the performances of, of le bon Bec, it's extraordinary and and it really is amazing the the performance and the musicality is world class but then you you factor in the aspect of them moving around the stage and the movement it's it's really i remember the first time i saw a video of the group i was i was amazed and dumbfounded at how extraordinary it was it was really really very 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 enjoyable and I, what what is the website if people would like to learn more about that eric you could see on the website le bon Bec, huh? You, uh, you have a lot of video if you write uh, Le Bon Bec on the, uh, we have the Facebook too on Le Bon Bec, uh, Instagram, of course. And if you could uh, see the, the, the name of the last show is uh, Big Bang. Big, big Bang. B-I-G. It's a very, it's a, yeah, being, uh, big, big bang. Big. Big bang. Voilà, okay. Big bang. <laughs> Yeah, big bang. Uh, it's okay. a very good show. I saw this one in uh, in Paris. Uh, was lucky yes. enough to uh, uh, thanks to Isabelle Azra, uh, who um, uh, who convinced me not to stay sleeping in my hotel room. And that was uh, that was a very uh, very great evening. Not only musically and like you said the dancing, but there is a lot of humor. Uh, it's it's very funny. It's very interactive, and it's uh, it's a, it's an amazing. I mean, you sit there. You sit there for an hour and a half, and it feels like ten minutes because it's it's so entertaining. So, if if you would like to check them out for our American viewers that maybe aren't up on their French, it's L E S B O N S and then B E C B E C S B E C S. Yeah, le, it's a pure, plural, Matt. Come on, right. brush up oh. on your French. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's, it's many bombek. Uh, <laughs> no, but really check it out if you had it. Their wonderful performance is amazing. You'll, you'll really enjoy it. Um, we are, are going to wrap things up. I do want to quickly uh, review the schedule for our upcoming Together at Home webcast. Um, on Thursday of this week, uh, my colleague and good friend Warren Coos, who is our high brass product specialist, he will be joined by Josh Landris to talk about the Metropolitan Trumpet, the new uh, series of trumpets that Josh uh, has been involved with. That will be Thursday on the BNS uh, Facebook page. Next Tuesday, Al Maniscalco, who is our Director of Sales and Marketing at Buffet Crumpon USA. He's also the Group Product Manager for Kyle Worth Saxophones. He will be joining us uh, a week from today 
uh, uh, Julius Kauer, saxophones, past, present, and future. And he will be joined by special guest Jochen Kyleworth, who is the uh, Wolfgang Krumbaum Germany CFO. So you'll definitely want to tune in for uh, both of those upcoming uh, broadcasts. We have webcasts actually scheduled through the remainder of this month uh, throughout all of our brands. And I know uh, you'll enjoy tuning in for those. Uh, I do want to say a couple of other hellos before we sign off this afternoon. Uh, Lynn Musco uh, checked in. Lynn, it's great to see you. I will talk to you later this afternoon. Um, I see that Al posted a link to the, uh, to the Le Bon Bec, uh, website, which is great. Al, thank you for doing that. Um, Francois, do you have anything you'd like to uh, add before we conclude today? No, uh, not much beside um, uh, one tiny, uh, I mean, not tiny, it's, it's an important, uh, you know, we've talked about the, 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 the professional range of clarinets, uh, but there is also something that Eric has been involved with is the, uh, the student clarinet, the Prodige, which is very a departure from what the student clarinet was before. I think it's a very unique instrument as many of our artists have demonstrated in videos and uh, on YouTube. And actually, I think that was the ICA in um, Kansas City, where Pierre Genisson, uh, with his uh, uh, corporate um, Mr. André Moisan, uh, made, um, uh, made a pari, a bet. And uh, actually, you can, I think you can find that on the Vendor and uh, TV, uh, the performance uh, of uh, Pierre Genisson, who picked up the, the prodige from the booth uh, asked me if I could take a quick look at it. So I looked at it and I gave it to him. I'm kidding, I just did some adjustments. Uh, and then he played the entire recital on this. Uh, and that, that, um, that speaks, first of all, volumes of uh, what kind of artist Pierre is, of course. Uh, but also uh, that instruments was, um, uh, uh, did, not, uh, did not give him too much of a hard time, I think. Uh, so that was something also where Eric was, uh, uh, was very involved. And that's, uh, if, you, if, if people have not checked these instruments out yet, I really highly recommend they do uh, because it's uh, pretty much, uh, uh, you know, a polysynergy call ball into a student clarinet, which was not done before, correct, Eric? Yeah, to t totally agree. Uh, it's a it's wonderful clarinet. And I mean, for, for the young people, it's, uh, it, you could really learn with uh, such instruments, you have the buffet sound, and this is uh, very important. Yeah, and good yes. job on that also, Eric. Yes. As, yeah. As all the many other things you, you've done. It's so great to see you. It's almost like I could Thank no, you very I much. not hug you because we have to social distance, which the screen makes easy. Uh, but I yeah. really miss you guys. Yeah. Thank you very well, much. It's, it's great to see all of you. Eric, thank you so much for joining us uh, on, on your evening. It's, it's what, a little after nine o'clock now in, in France? Yes, it's nine o'clock, uh, yeah. The Ricard time. Yeah, but say, <laughs> say where's your bottle of wine? It's too late for the Ricard now. <laughs> it's, uh, the, the Ricard was before the video. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both for joining us. Again, I'm glad you're, you're both healthy and well. It's, it's been my thank pleasure and my privilege. To, to have you both join us today. And uh, we will definitely do this again, I'm sure. So, and thank you to, to all thank of our you. viewers, all of our artists and all of our dealers for joining us this afternoon. Please stay healthy and well. And we look yeah. forward to seeing you uh, Thursday afternoon. Yeah, thanks to and everyone. Take care, for everybody support. take care. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ciao, Eric. Ciao, ciao. Bye, Matt. <laughs>